All right, let's take a look at a more complex scenario where we've got objects that are um, interacting with each other. So in this case, um, we've got two people joined together by a massless uh, rope. We've got Mary, we've got Don. And so Mary, she's got a mass of 50. Don's got a mass of 70. They're tied together. Um, Don <coughs> steps off a cliff. Mary's standing on frictionless horizontal sheet of ice. <coughs> And assuming that the tree limb is frictionless, so meaning assuming that this acts like an actual pulley, we want to determine the tension in the rope and the accelerations of the two. And then we want to know what would happen if she cut the rope. All right, so again, we've got two objects now, one traveling in the horizontal, one traveling in the vertical, right? And they're moving as a system. So if we want to solve this problem, first thing you always want to do is again let's get a free body diagram going so let's start with mary mary's got 50 kilogram mass there's a normal force acting on her she has weight that weight we're going to call mass mary times the acceleration due to gravity it's frictionless all right so we don't have to worry about friction going that way and there's a tension force in the rope Now Don, on the other hand, mass is at 70 kilograms. He's got weight, so we'll call that mass Don times acceleration due to gravity. And there's a tension force. And we know he's moving downwards. Now, notice I didn't subscript our tension forces here. The reason I didn't subscript them is because they share the same tension force, right? If you have that rope of negligible mass connecting these two objects and it's taut, then that tension force is the same acting on Don and on Mary. The other thing that's going to be the same is that acceleration, right? Because again, the rope is taut, they're acting as um, two objects in a single system. Now, if we want to figure out our tension forces and our acceleration, good place to always start with these problems is let's set up a net force equation for each one of these. So net force acting on Mary is equal to Mary's mass times her acceleration. Right, and the net force acting on Don is equal to Don's mass times acceleration. All right, so always start with just a basic um, statement of Newton's second law for each object. And then you can work them out simultaneously until you can find a bridge between the two. So for Don, we've got mass of Don times G minus tension equals mass of Don times A. Now, you'll notice here that I'm making downwards my positive direction. And the reason I'm doing that is just rule of thumb. Make whichever way they're moving your positive direction. That way you have to deal with a lot less negatives. It makes your life easier. Now, Mary, on the other hand, she's only got one force acting in the dimension of acceleration. So force of tension equals mass of Mary times acceleration. Now, we got two unknowns in each one of these equations, right? Tension and acceleration. But we just put tension in terms of acceleration. So we can go ahead and take mass of Mary times A and plug it in here for tension. So mass of Don times G minus mass of Mary times A is equal to mass of Don times A. Well, let's get all of our unknown value on the same side. So mass of Don times G is equal to mass of Don A plus mass of Mary times acceleration. So mass of Don times G is equal to acceleration times mass of Don plus mass of Mary. So our acceleration is equal to mass of Don times G over the combined masses of the two. 
Now what you'll notice as we get into more complex problems, I'm typically going to wait to sub in my uh, values until the very last second. It just makes your life easier. It's it's uh, harder to make a mathematical error if you know you're just moving variables around rather than actually plugging in numbers. So now let's plug everything in. So our acceleration is equal to 70 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared over 70 kilograms plus 50 kilograms. So you do the math, your acceleration comes out to 5.72 meters per second squared. Right. And again, that is the acceleration for both Dawn and Mary. All right, now that we have our acceleration, we can come back up here and solve out for our tension force. Because again, that tension force is shared between Dawn and Mary. So five, or 50 kilograms times 5.72 meters per second squared. And we get a tension force of 285.8 newtons. 85.8 newtons. All right, so again, we've got to work a system of equations like we did in the last one. But if you always start with these two steps, right, you'll see what you have to do as you start working it out. So always, always, always get at least to this step actually rather this step before you know throwing in a towel because here's where you're going to see how you solve that problem now the last portion asks us what would happen if she cut the rope well if Mary cuts the rope Dawn's gonna fall obviously but what's gonna happen to Mary well if she cuts that rope well, yes, that tension force here is now gone, right? Meaning that she'll no longer be accelerating, but she's still going to end up sliding off the cliff, right? Because once she cuts that, that rope, tension force disappears, acceleration drops to zero, but since there's no frictional force, she'll continue to move at whatever speed she was going when she cut the rope, and so will eventually reach the cliff. She's just not speeding up towards it. She'll travel towards it with a constant velocity. So she doesn't save herself by killing off Dotton, basically. Um, now, tomorrow I'll upload a video on um, how to deal with forces on an inclined plane. Um, but yeah, yeah, hopefully that helped clear up um, that box question on the last daily problem. Um, understanding that tension between your two objects are identical. Um, but yeah, see you in the live engagement.